from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. All right, I got a question for you. I know times are tough. I know people are paying off their debts if they can, cutting their spending if they can, tightening up their resumes, cutting back on holiday spending, cutting back on all spending. Everybody's doing it. Everybody. Unemployment up. Consumer confidence at all-time lows. People nervous, angry, flipped out. So now that we have been living through this for a while, now that we have been living through the fear, the cuts, the layoffs, the increased unemployment claims, the stock market cratering, along with your IRA and your 401k and your 403b. And uh, let's add in that uh, Bernard Madoff scandal. (laughs) And God only knows what else. Here is my question to you. If you could name one person or group, who is at fault? Who would that be? Who caused this? Was it a person? Was it a group? Who did it? Who is the culprit? I'm wondering if there's one person you've you've drawn a bullseye on, one person you blame, one person who is primarily responsible, or not, or is there one group that is primarily responsible? Who put us here? Who did this? You tell me. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Likas Show. Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. All right, who put us here? Who got us into this mess? There's no election going on now. (laughs) There's no need to call in and endorse one candidate or another. Or to say that one candidate or another caused it. (laughs) I mean, come on. Now it's just you and me talking here. Okay? We've all suffered a little pain. All of us. All of us. Me too. Yes. Now, who put us here? 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's our telephone number. It's current on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Um, for a long time, Father. Thanks yeah. for having me. Sure. It's George W. Bush and his minions. George W. Bush. Absolutely. You know, if you remember back in early 2000 when he assembled his cabinet, he actually had a pretty good Treasury Secretary in Paul O'Neill. And the economy started turning. Uh, Clinton was fortunate to have a nice business cycle that was a positive for about eight years, and it it was starting to go south then. And W was determined to not have the same legacy that his father had, which was kind of a weak economy. And he asked Paul O'Neill to uh, improve the numbers. And his response was, the numbers are the numbers. You know, I mean, they are what they are. And... um, that was not good enough for um, for his administration. So Paul O'Neill resigned, and they replaced him with another Treasury Secretary, 
who apparently was going to give them the numbers that the administration liked better. And that's what scares the heck out of me, Tom, is that for the last seven and a half or so years, we don't know what the numbers are. I don't believe anyone anymore. I Absolutely. I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but when, I, you know, Paul, read Paul O'Neill's book that he produced after he left the Treasury. I mean, yeah. you know, it was pretty clear enough. And I think that's part of the reason you have a hard time getting people to invest in the stock market again. I don't think people trust anybody anymore. Larry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, if we just take a look for a second and take all the other variables out, like pick out the war and um, look to really what set the economy off, we, we're all going to agree essentially that it was the subprime mortgage crisis. Um and I honestly b blame Bill Clinton because what Bill Clinton did was Bill Clinton used to be if you needed a mortgage, you went to a bank and the local banker talked to you and took a look at your, your, your uh, how much money you're making, your income, your assets, and then they gave you a mortgage or they didn't. What Bill Clinton did was Bill Clinton allowed these individual investment houses and other people to do mortgages. And what happened was we ended up with the mortgage crisis because of a lot of greed and people just want to make a dollar. So personally, I blame Bill Clinton because you, if you wanted to get a mortgage in the old days and you went to your local banker and they were the ones that dealt with it, um, you look at a company like Wells Fargo, which wasn't hit because they didn't have a, uh, they didn't have a lot of these um, subprime loans where they were just motivated by greed. So my personal opinion is I'll, I'll, I'll blame Bill Clinton only only by a close second. I think ultimately, I think it was Nixon that took us off the gold standard. I think that if we had gold for money, um, actual paper money to back it up, we wouldn't be in the problems we are now because it seems like we just keep turning the old presses anytime we need money and we could just make an infinite amount of money and dilute the dollar. And that's why it's so weak as it is right now. Perfect. All right, Larry, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello here to our good friend Kat from Studio City, California. Kat, you're on the Tom Lanka Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. Going on all that good stuff. Um, it's hard to blame one person or one group for something this vast, but your second caller, I think, got a lot closer to than the Kool-Aid drinker who you took first. Um, I think the concept that got us into this is called political correctness. And it started with Jimmy Carter and the Community Redevelopment Act, where it's just not fair that some people can't afford mortgages and other people can. So let's make it so everybody can have a mortgage. And that started it, and then Clinton sort of strengthened that idea. And banks and uh, Freddie and Fannie and just regular banks were actually intimidated into giving loans to unqualified people and uh, PC or not some people are not qualified to have loans and when you force them to be given it starts that ball, ro ball rolling I know it's all fun to blame everything on Bush but only thing I blame him for is the same thing asleep at the wheel perhaps but uh, as a group I blame um, the biggest recipients of donations from Freddie and Fannie, which were Obama and Chris Dodd, actually Chris Dodd more than Obama, and uh, Schumer and uh, that whole group, Barney Frank. Uh, actually, McCain in 2005 tried to put the brakes on Freddie and Fannie, and I know he's a big deregulator, but in this case, he wanted this more, more regulation, and they all fought him tooth and nail. So then, the, then the, you know, then it went to the... Um, the uh, the greedy people on Wall Street who bundled these things and put them in derivatives and all these other packages and that just added flame to the fire and here we go. And here we go. Thank you for the call. It's Hugo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Well, I'm not an educated person per se. I don't know very much about politics, but when I heard this question, I wanted to give my uh, opinion. Um, I've never been a manager, but I have been a supervisor. And I know from being a supervisor, whether it's a KFC or you name it, when something's going wrong in your department, per se, it's your responsibility. My manager was in charge of me and a bunch of other guys in my place, which I got laid off from. So I can kind of feel, you know, as far as being laid off and the way the economy is right now, I can kind of feel the raw end of it. Wow. So my opinion is George Bush 
is fully responsible because he had eight years to be proactive as far as seeing anything coming towards him. Now, let me ask you a question. And you know I think George Bush is the biggest moron to get down the pike in a long time. But can, can any one person be responsible for something this big? Well, it's his job, so I am going to say yes, because like like I was saying, when I was a supervisor, no matter what happened, whether it was my fault or not, I'm, well, I mean, that's me. I, I took responsibility, and I said, you know what, it, to myself, I said, you know what, I know it was such and such person that pretty much screwed me, but it is my responsibility, and I'm not going to go around pointing fingers. And, I mean, I wasn't the president of the United States of America, but, like I said, I was in charge of something, and I took full responsibility. And I had about three years in the company before I got laid off. So, technically, that's three years that whatever went wrong at that place, it's Hugo's fault. Um, you know? All right. Thank you for that. one eight hundred five eight hundred 800 tom It's our telephone number. All right. We're in the soup. Things are going badly. Who is responsible? Chad in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, so I'm, if I were to blame anybody, I'd say it's the uh, the American consumer. Uh, we're so obsessed with buying everything for the cheapest possible price that I think it's driven all all products to be uh, made in foreign lands where they have cheaper labor and such. So uh, there's no jobs left. There's nothing that's American made and that's a huge part of the problem, I believe. Yeah. Well, uh, there was a lot of greed out there, and a lot of what we have uh, was caused by the average moron trying to flip houses. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, all right, well, blow me up, man. All right, here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Alec on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Uh, not much. Hey, this is the first time I've been calling. I've been listening, and you are on point all the way around. Just wanted to say thanks for putting people in the place they need to be. Sure. And I wanted to say that um, I was listening to what you mentioned about the topic, and um, the first thing that came to my mind is the Bilderberg Group. Bilderberg, B-I-L-D-E-R, actually B-I-L-B-E-R. No, it's, it's Bilderberg. Uh, there's no R in there, I don't believe. Uh, Bilderberg, B I L D. E R B E R G. Now, <laughs> this is uh, the, the call that uh, every uh, radio talk show dreads the the dreaded conspiracy theory. Um, this call comes mostly to AM radio stations where they have lots of commercials telling you to buy gold. Uh, so uh, go ahead, tell us your reason why, if you even know what the Bilderberg Group is, tell us. At the end of what? World War II, the the leaders of all the major influential institutions, financial and even religious, um, got together every year since then to this day. And they've been referred to as the Bilderberg Group because they don't have an official name. But the, the hotel that they met at the first time was called Bilderberg, which they agreed on. If anybody has an Internet connection, you have Google, you can Google it and find out how it's spelled. I might have spelled it wrong, but it's Bilderberg and um, the bottom line is that um, we don't know about them. Now, whether it's a conspiracy or not, great point. Great point. Thanks for bringing it up. But nonetheless, maybe we should hear about it. How come we haven't heard about oh, it? Oh, come on. Come... I've heard about it a million times. That's why I, I dread it when I hear it. because. Uh, but, but let me ask you. Let me ask you. Besides it being shown... No one a... has any real evidence of this. But just let me ask you one Including question. you. Just let me ask you one question, Tom. Is, um, even though you've heard about it, great, but... Uh, besides you knowing that it's supposed to be called a conspiracy and not talked about, ironically, what do it's you been, know it's about, been what talked do about. You know about That's, it, though? Uh, again, it doesn't matter what I know about it. What it matters it doesn't is matter what you know every about it, time, including, by the way, and by the way, I might add, everybody who ever brings this up, including you, I say, I, uh, you, uh, you're not going to talk over me, so I'll put you on hold and finish what I have to say about this. Everybody who ever calls a radio show and, and accuses the Bilderbergs of being, uh, or the Bilderbergers or whatever they are, accuses them of being responsible. Uh, for you name it, I say, all right, let's see the proof. And no one ever has any. And that's why it doesn't get talked about. A news story has, like, proof. It has evidence. It has 
wait. It doesn't just have a bunch of people calling talk shows. Just like over the years, people have said the Rockefellers are responsible and the Carnegie family is responsible. I, I've heard all of these over the years and variations thereof. The Bush family is responsible. Nobody ever has any evidence of it. But I let you say it so that you couldn't accuse me of being part of the conspiracy. 1-800-5800-TOM. Who is responsible for the mess we're in now? This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. This is Chris. Uh, I know. I just how said you doing? Go ahead. Hey, uh, listen. Um, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on what they talked about Clinton. And um, back when the first Bush was in, you could the banks could only loan out, you know, $10 on every $1, you know, they make. And when Clinton got in, what he started to do was he said, well, we, I think that more sh people should be able to buy houses. Therefore, he changed it to $60. So that made it easier for everybody, for these companies to give out loans, for the banks to give out more loans. And then they figured out how to wait. And then when people started doing it, they, they started to make packages and, and then they were able to, um, uh, sell, you know, businessmen were buying big packages of loans, and they were able to sell it from one bank to another bank to another bank, and it just and it just, you know, freefalled. So, uh, you know, Clinton signing that bill and making it more accessible to uh, for the banks to lend out. You know, I I, I blame these real estate agents. You know, it, it came down and hit us. Well, okay, thank you for that, Chris. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Well, I think the people who borrowed this money, who knew they could never pay this the money back with the rates that they were getting, even though they were so low and it looked like a great deal, they knew they could never pay the money back, so the banks were never going to get that money back. So you could say it's the people's fault for trying to borrow the money. And you could also say it's the bank's fault for lending the money, even though they probably knew that they weren't going to get the money back ever. Well, uh, I, I agree with that, uh, actually. I, I do believe that uh, the typical moron who borrows more money than they can pay back who borrows money knowing they can't pay it back, who borrows money on a, on a stated income loan and then lies about their income, uh, the, these are some of the biggest culprits. It's kind of hard for us to look at ourselves and say, we did this. Uh, but uh, the greed of the average moron, I think, is one of the biggest conspirators. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a bunch of stupid people in all the wrong places. <laughs> I think you're right about that. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right, I'm trying to find out. Here we are in terrible economic hard times. And uh, now I'm wondering, now that we've been going through this for a while, who do you think is responsible? Melvin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, pretty much I just want to say we're all responsible to some degree because we know the generations before us go through certain economic hardships. And if we're not all conscious and paying attention, we can't make change. Therefore, everybody from Bush to the guy who's homeless on the street you know, we're all responsible for our actions to some degree. On the same token, we we have to stop throwing the blame and start taking, you know, more group-oriented actions because you, you can't make change individually, you know? And that's pretty much how everybody is, you know, calling into the show. They're saying, well, it's this group or that group. I mean, the guy who just stole $50 billion, n nobody said anything about him. But... He's definitely out there, and there's another guy somewhere else doing it. You know, yeah. we have we as Americans have to have to kind of band together and make a change as a group, educate each other, and and stop knocking off each other. I think that's why other nations are so easy and quick to come to America because they can stay unified in a way that we divide ourselves. Thank you for that, Melvin. I appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Mike on the Tom Likas show. Tom, it's real simple. We're all to blame. And I say that because we've got tired of being told to accept only 5, 6, or 7% return on investments. We want 12, 15, 20% returns. We want our money now. And because of that, we put pressure on the financial institutions to find creative, risky ways to make money for us. And we end up screwing ourselves for it. 
Thank you for that, Mike. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Damien on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Damien. Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. First time caller. Hey, you know something? I blame I blame the regulators. I blame everybody. I blame um, the savings along corporations. I blame everybody because initially people were getting these loans. They knew they knew the loan companies knew countrywide. They knew that the people couldn't pay these loans back, and they were stated income. Hey, I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, even though I work at McDonald's. They knew what was happening. Well, wouldn't you say the people themselves who took out the loans also knew what was happening? Yeah, but they no. A lot I of mean, we always we always happened. come on. We always picture these people as victims. If you have a stated income loan and you make twenty eight thousand dollars a year, but you say you make one hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars right. a year, I mean, you can't tell me you are not culpable. That's true. That's true. But the government. I mean, after nine eleven. The house, the, the home prices went from a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, to five hundred thousand dollars. The medium home price in California, right? So, and that's because want... these morons were running around pre-qualified for these moronic loans. And uh, by the way, people that I know, I dated a woman who said, "Let's buy five houses. Let's oh, yeah, buy five houses. Well, we'll just paint them and we'll sell them to somebody else for more." Yeah, uh, those morons. I'm saying people who took advantage of the system. I'm not talking about the, the general people out there who, who are just trying to get into a home to provide shelter for their kids. I'm talking about the people who took advantage of the system. So the loan officers, the mortgage companies, the people who made big money exploiting um, the middle class workers. You know, put them into well, paper again, loans. they were very easily exploited because they were as greedy as the people who made those loans to them. And they were uneducated. A lot of those people weren't educated. I like, don't. Oh, that's not. A, that's also not an excuse. You know yeah. what? If you're uneducated, it's because you don't pick up a book or a magazine. No, I, I agree with Come that. Come on, Tom. I agree with what you, what you're saying because a lot of these people they were uneducated. And I, I don't just blame the people who exploited. I mean, nobody Some taught people, nobody I, taught me about loans and mortgages in school. Right. It's it's morality. It's basic morality. And and I know if I can't pay a loan back, I can't take it out. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah. But you know that, Tom. But there's a lot of there's a, But I. Know, but wait a minute. Of, how how smart do you have to be to know that? Thirty percent. Thirty percent of the the population are, are just idiots. So. Um, and you're being. You're, all I'm going to say is you're being very generous. Come on, Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's the Tom Likas show. The Tom Likas show now heard six days a week. Huh. If this isn't enough punishment, try getting whacked around Saturdays from two until six. On 97.1 FM Talk. And uh, by the way, if you can't listen to us on the radio uh, for whatever reason on Saturday on 97.1 FM Talk, then maybe you're out of town or out of the country. Go to blowmeuptop.com. Click on the Listen Live button between 2 and 6 p.m. Pacific Time. And there you'll be. All right, here we are. We're deep in trouble financially in every way. Talk about the auto industry going completely out of business in this country. I mean, the list is long. And I'm just wondering, um, who is responsible? Who did it? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tommy boy, I love you, man. Thank you. I gotta say, I gotta say, I love you and I hate you at the same time. But I gotta say, the people who are responsible are the richest people in the world. You gotta think about it, Tom. Money is power. So you got to think the people who have the most money have the most control. These well, I understand people. many of the uh, richest people in the world are worth a lot less today because of what's happened. True, true. But there like are the Warren Buffett, for example, the richest person. True. But what about the people that lend nations money? What about the people that we borrow money from? These are private, or these are private well, organizations. Well, no. As a matter of fact, uh, much of our money is borrowed from China. And what about China the bought our treasury bills, and it's China that holds our debt, a lot of it. All right. And the government doesn't take a card, uh, doesn't take an ATM card down to the bank and, you know, take out $300 at a time. It doesn't work that way. 
course. Would you consider China to be the reason, or would you consider China to be the ones who funded our war? Well, in a sense, they did. Because they are the ones who bought our debt in the form of treasury bills. You don't consider... You don't consider that to be a plan of theirs at all. You just you just think well, that they, uh, a plan of theirs? How could they know we were going to take their money and use it to go to war against Iraq? You don't think that they are uh, pressured or advised us to go into war to put them into loans? And and, and I, 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 if you have evidence of that, I, I'm all ears. But you don't. You're just making this up. You're pulling it out of your ass. Is what you do? Okay, Tom. Would, so do you believe that the smartest people in the world running the show, we're really doing the best that we can? No, here? no, no. I'm not saying that nobody's responsible. Uh, but I think that uh, we have to take as much responsibility as the morons who regulate what we do. Yeah, but if it's on purpose, I mean, breeding morons on purpose, how are we ever, you know, going to ever grow as, as, a, as a nation, you know? Well, I, you know how we're going to grow? Some hard times. Uh, we're going to grow up here now. We're going to pay our bills. Uh, we're going to sell the houses or give away or give back the houses that we can't afford to pay for. We're going to stop buying so much crap that we don't need. We're going to live with smaller cars, smaller places to live, True. less crap. You know, we're going to grow up now. Very true, very true. That's what's going to happen. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more to what was said before, or a different angle, I should say. Before the break, you were talking to a guy about, you know, people who are taking out these stated income loans to buy a house they can't afford, hoping right. it'll appreciate, and then resell it and make money, right? Right. Right. Well, the angle I'm going to come in at is I live out here in Southern California in Orange County in Adam Hills. Uh, a lot of people that were out here in the poorer areas or, or the areas of Orange County that were living in small houses that wanted to have a bigger house would buy a house they could barely afford out in, like, the Inland Empire, which is, like, you know, 45 miles away, right? So they would drive, they'd buy this house they could barely afford, which is really nice, brand new. They would drive 60 miles one way to work. Now, this is before the gas prices quadrupled. So when the gas prices quadrupled, all of a sudden, now their gas bill is four times as much as before, so that threw their whole budget out of whack, and they weren't able to make their mortgage because they still had to go to work. And then I think it was just, you know, since the price, gas prices quadrupled, everything, you know, in the market quadrupled to make up food, things like that. So now their whole budget that they had squared away, before the gas prices went up, it's now way out of whack. Now they can't pay the mortgage because they got to pay for food, and they got to pay for gas to get to work. So that's my thing. I think the gas prices, in addition to um, some of the gas prices, the, you know, how do the gas prices go up? Who do, who do you think is responsible for that? Well, that I, I don't know. I don't have any evidence of. All I can say is you that's know, why I, the question here is who did this? Well. You know, I think it's. I think. I think. Uh, I think a lot of us. I mean, I. I don't. I can't put it on one person. I have no evidence of that. I. I want to, but I can't even chastising everybody who doesn't have any evidence. So I don't have any evidence. That's just my opinion. All right. Thank you for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Garrett on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Garrett. Hey, uh, I want to uh, talk about the same thing here about about people trying to flip that house to make a quick dollar. You know, okay. it really hurts the the guy who like like myself. I'm a commercial electrician, and uh, I'm trying to buy a house, and uh, I make good money. You know, about twelve hundred a week. You know, it's it's not that bad, uh, but but I can't even afford to 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 get a loan because I have to rent. You know, where where people are going and watching this uh, flip that house and thinking they can make thirty grand on four properties or five properties like that chick you were dating, man. You know, it's crazy. You know, and I'm paying fifteen hundred a month in rent to live in Huntington Beach in a two bedroom place. Right. You know, yeah, it's crazy. You know, but uh, kick me out with the bong toke and uh, thank you, Jesus. Here you go, Garrett. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Manual on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 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 Hey, Tom. How's it going today? It's going okay. Yeah, you know, 
man, ever since uh, Bush is, uh, took office, everybody knew this was going to be a smash and grab, right? The banks, the banks just did what everyone else is going to do, take advantage of the situation. And really, really, the person totally responsible for this is, is George Bush. Two years ago, uh, Freddie, what was it? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac went to him and asked him to lift the cap on FHA loans, right? And, which makes sense. Property values go up, meaning more houses that will that will fall into the jumbo loan category, we're going to hit the market. No, nah, what does this guy do? He says, he, no, nah, these, these two companies need to be taught a lesson. And this is the kind of, you know, kind of idiot we had running the country for eight years. Well, I understand what you're saying, and uh, I know a lot of people blame him, and I certainly think he was a big part of the problem. I, I think when you look at this uh, Ponzi, scheme scandal, Ponzi scheme scandal with uh, this Bernard Madoff, uh, where the SEC had gotten several warnings over a 10-year period about this loser and did nothing about it. Well, who is in charge of appointing the head of the SEC? Well, well that, was, that just speaks to the type of leadership we have. Everybody knew they were going to come in, smash this country, and, and take as much as they could, and that's exactly what, they, what they've done. They, they you know, rammed oil prices through the roof they started you know started a war that we don't need to be in so that all the friends and buddies can make as much money as possible and in their world there's a winner and there's a loser you know what i mean and the people are, are the losers on this end guys you know it's it's really it's all they're all part of the same scheme it's 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 a philosophy that hopefully you know we're gonna have to work our way out of guys yeah i think you make a lot of good sense i thank you for the call 1-800-5800-TOM. Like us. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. You're under me. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And uh, look what I just received in the listener email box here. This is from Mark Peoples Productions Incorporated. It says here, if you're considering changing your station's imaging voice, please take a moment to visit markpeoples.com and listen to the demos or request an audition with your station's copy. Mark is a versatile station voice with plenty of attitude, authority, and personality and fast turnaround. With an excellent reputation. Recently, we've added CIRK in Edmonton, Alberta, WCSX in Detroit, WTGB in Washington, D.C., WNOR in Chesapeake, Virginia, and KDAG, KDAG in Farmington, New Mexico. Right now, Mark is also the voice for Bubba the Love Sponge, the Hog in Milwaukee, the bone in Tampa, <laughs> and many more. All rates are customized based on your market size and budget. Don't hesitate to call with any questions. Give us an opportunity to work something out for you and be heard on your station. And uh, Mark uh, has no shame. He sent that right to the listener email of our show, so I have no problem um, roasting him. Dean, why don't you call him and get a demo tape from him, yeah. Can you print that out? I'll call him. Yeah, yeah give him a, yeah, here, uh, yeah, you just, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and, uh, <laughs> I'll print that out for Dean in the other room, but he can, uh, he can call and get a demo tape, we can find out what his rates are. Maybe he's cheaper than the guy we're using. Only trying to save a buck. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. All right, we're in this big financial mess here, and now that we've been going through it for a while, who is responsible? Who did it? Who is most responsible? Eli on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, long time, first time, man. Thank first you. Time, first thing i got to say is uh, thank you. Good show, man, I appreciate it. Sure. Uh, you know what, people have been saying some good names, but nobody yet has mentioned Alan Greenspan. Don't you think? I mean, for keeping the interest rate so low for so long after um, in 2001 and on, it made it so easy to, for everybody to get a loan, and not the people who couldn't afford it, but people who could afford it too. Yeah. Uh, Overhyped everything. 
<laughs> well, and he kept the interest rates down for a much longer time than they needed to be down. Exactly. You should have started raising them. I mean, halfway. The <laughs> idea the idea was to stimulate the economy right after 9-11 so we, we wouldn't exactly. be paralyzed. Uh, but once we were getting back to normal, it was time to raise the interest rates back up. He just left it there. Completely right. Completely left it there, and everything just went out of proportion. The housing mess, then the gas crisis, and the dollar devaluation. I mean, there's other contributors, obviously, but, man, he's a big key in it. No doubt about it. All right, buddy. Just wanted to throw that out there. All right. Thank you, Eli, for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Who got us into this mess? Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Good. Good. Um, yeah, you know, everybody got us into this. It uh, it starts with, with the people, the 25-year-old kids selling mortgages, and people buying those mortgages and not looking at the paperwork to even know what they're signing. And the, the uh, investment bankers and people that repackage those things and the, the rating agencies that gave them AAA ratings when they resold these securities. Yeah. And then at the, at the same time, our government being asleep at the wheel the whole time and, you know, everybody watching this big party and no one realizing there's going to be a big hangover at the end. Well, that, that's exactly right. Well, some people realized it. Uh, I know I realized it, and that was why I liquidated one-third of my investments uh, in the fourth quarter of last year and uh, prepared to put them into a new piece of real estate I bought the price of which was in the process of falling already because the real estate market was already starting to take a slide. And I made that purchase, and now I've got a 20-acre property. And uh, I uh, paid for it with all the profits I made by getting out before everybody else didn't get it. Well, congratulations. I well, think that's some of my money in there, too. So. Well, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Come up and uh, smoke a cigar with me sometime on your property. Good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. How complicated is it? I can't believe people couldn't see this coming. Willie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? Doing okay, Willie. Hey, Tom. Long time listener, first time caller. Ooh, ah. thank you so much. Hey, check this out. I'm gonna keep it short and simple. Hey, Bushman saw his fault. Another thing, Tom. Well, who's the government, man? Who? I mean, are these people like hidden or what? Who knows about them? Which? Are they ever, I mean, the government. Who runs? We the government? know who they are. It's George Bush and Dick Cheney, and uh, whoever's running the Federal Reserve, who for most of Bush's term, yeah. of course, was Alan Greenspan, and the Treasury Secretary. Uh, currently, it's a guy named Hank Paulson, who used to work on Wall Street. Hey, you know, hey, Tom, sorry to uh, cut you, but hey, if these vatos ever came to my barrio, I take care of them, and then I take off my guarache and throw it at Bush's head also. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Malia on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Dad. Hi, dear. <laughs> I think complacency is the issue, Tom. I really think public complacency, we don't demand better products, we don't demand innovation, and we don't work to, to embed ourselves as a nation, both productivity-wise, you know, education-wise. I mean, we've really got, we've really fallen behind compared to the rest well, of the world. Well, I, I don't think you can uh, generalize to that extent. Because here's why. I think we do demand better products in terms of cars, and that's why most people have stopped buying the American cars, and that's why the American auto industry is in the tank. I'm sorry, so that's, I, I agree with you there. All right, so Americans do demand better cars and better gadgets. You notice our gadgets keep getting better and better. Uh, well, Blackberries and Trios and iPhones and uh, uh, iPods, they all keep getting better. But, 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 so those are the things where we demand innovation. Where we do not demand better and where we accept less is when it comes to everyday items like hammers or nails or plywood or whatever. Uh, we are uh, looking to get the lowest possible price. All of that stuff to us is commodities. We don't demand better. And that is why Walmart is your big retailer of Chinese merchandise. Cheap Chinese merchandise, and people get it at the lowest possible price. Well, yeah, I agree, Tom. It's a global market, though, too. A lot of these things are easier to access from other countries rather than demanding it of our own, A. And then... Too, I think com the complacency carries over even in personal investments. I mean, a lot of these people weren't even paying attention to their own investments as it was. 
they weren't paying attention to what these banks were doing. As well. uh, it's like it's like the people who should have known better in that uh, Ponzi scheme uh, scandal that we're hearing so much about. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, the, these are billionaires and um, hundred millionaires, and these are people who just said, "All right, Matt, off you take all that money and t don't even tell me. Just get me the returns." Exactly. And this is what you get. Uh, I agree with you, sir. Absolutely. All right, Malia, thank you for that. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Who got us into this mess? Davis in Portland, Oregon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Davis. Uh, I think, you know, what you just uh, said there at the end is, is exactly the right point. The uh, investors, basically, and, and the traders is who I believe are the ones that are responsible for this because, uh, you know, they're looking to sell, you know, these mortgage-backed securities as you know as bonds and if they can get you know if they can offer a seven percent uh bond people are going to eat that up well how do you do that you basically you, you make loans where people don't have to show any documentation any proof of anything and you know the, the only way to feed that that need is to continue to have the investors and the bond traders you know trading this this crap and it's the same thing with gasoline prices. OPEC themselves were saying that they that they're not inflating the price. They have no idea the demand, the supply was was there to meet the demand. It's the the, the traders, you know, it's Wall Street that is making this whole thing go crazy. And people are stupid. I mean, you can't blame. Uh, I mean, you can't blame people, but they're going to sign on the dotted line if they're going to get their dream house. So well, hopefully you know, they're getting an education now. Well, they're getting an education, but uh, we're all getting an education. But, you know, look at Wall Street. They're, they're, they're the ones that, you know, stood the most to make in this whole thing. And, you know, we, they made huge giants of, of money, and, of course, a few people are they are losing. Yes, but, but they capitalized on the greed of the average moron. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that's what a free country is all about. Davis, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. If you got that, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And, of course, hear our show live. Anytime it airs, Monday through Saturday, go to BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button, and you'll be listening to the show as it's being broadcast. And isn't that exciting? The Tom Likas Show.